But sir, Jonas suggested, since you have so much power... The man corrected him. Honor, he said firmly. I have great honor. So will you. But you will find that that is not the same as power. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm so good. Yeah. Hooray. Hey guys, it's Camille from Written and Smitten. Happy, happy Friday. Today I'm going to be talking about The Giver and its two adaptations. The Giver comes out on DVD and Blu-ray very soon. It was released August 15th as a major motion picture, and the book was published in 1993, so the movie adaptation and the book adaptation are 21 years apart. Side note, this book is actually part of a series, but it's not, it's not as recognizable like one, two, three. It's not the sort of series that picks up where it left off. I'm going to link to some people that have talked about that series in general so you can check them out. If you haven't heard about The Giver, stop. Pause this right now, scroll down, and read a description. BAM! Internet! So today we're talking about who wins, the movie or the book in my book. <laughs> There are one, two, three, four, five, six categories, and they're all pretty universal across book to movie adaptations. I'm not talking like the music in the book was absolutely terrible. <laughs> Our categories are plot development, character depth, emotional depth, drama or intensity, the universe depth, and the didactic or educational qualities. Category one, plot development. I'm giving half a point to the movie and a full point to the book. And I'll tell you why. So the plot in the book is really highly developed. There are ups, there are downs, there are highs, there are lows. As you're figuring out how Jonas's world works, he's figuring out himself. You honestly can't really predict what's going to happen next because you really don't know the universe quite yet. There are a lot of complex little moments that happen as a result of little bits and pieces of the book that have come together in one culminating sort of moment. And the flashbacks in the book also add depth and richness to the things that are happening in Jonas's present tense. However, in the movie, these aren't exactly utilized. Now, the movie does follow the book plot pretty precisely, aside from some of the other category things, but since we're talking about plot right now, it does go along really well. So that's why I'm giving a point to the book and a half point to the movie. There wasn't quite as much development with the movie plot. You can kind of see things coming. Category two! Character depth. So if we're gonna talk about characters, we're gonna talk about all these, this huge cast of characters. Now, in the book, there's a lot less focus on the other characters and a lot more focus on Jonas and the Giver and their development as characters. The thing about the Giver is that the characters themselves that live in this world and this community aren't allowed to really have much character depth. So there's something to be said for giving a character depth and dimension without giving it more complex feelings and thoughts and opinions. And this is something that the book adaptation does very, very well but the movie adaptation really could not do. And so with that, I'm going to give the point to the book. Category three, emotional depth. So with this category, I'm talking about the ability of the story to make you feel different emotions. The ability of the story to make you really think differently about some of the emotions that you're feeling. Now, in that regard, the movie is a major motion picture and it is aimed towards an audience that doesn't really necessarily look for that. That being said, obviously the book does a much better job of this, and I am giving them the point. Some specifics in this category include the development of trust. Really, there is no trust in the book, and as it continues on, you see a distrust develop, whereas with the movie, there's actually some idea of trust that was built between Jonas and Asher, and they touch on it together later in the movie. Something that's also done really well in the book is a touch on how you have to have unhappiness before you can know happiness. And they slightly touch on it in the movie, but it's never really explicitly touched on. The other thing is that there is a real focus in the movie on romantic love, which makes sense because that's kind of what draws people in sometimes. Whereas with the book, the focus on love was focused on the mentor and the focus on developing a sense of family, which is a much richer emotion to develop, simply because with a movie, you're focusing more on infatuation. Anyway. Category four, drama and intensity. So obviously a major motion picture is going to have billions of dollars to spend on creating this drama and intensity that is going to draw audiences of all ages to the movie theater. And they do! They spent a lot of money and a lot of off-plot 
little things to put into the movie to make it more dramatic. Obviously, the book doesn't really have a lot of drama in it simply because there are much less dramatic scenes because of the emotional plainness of the characters involved. The world itself doesn't really allow for these dramatic things to happen. So the movie took some liberties and made violence a thing. And there's something about having violence in the movie that simply makes the premise of the entire community basically fall apart when you start to examine it closely. However, they do have some aspect of it, so I guess this point goes to them. Fifth category is the universe, depth and development. So this has to do with your ability to visualize and feel like you are in the universe that is created in the adaptation. So we're talking about being able to see yourself in that place or be able to imagine other things happening in that place. And in this sense, obviously the movie does a much better job of that. It gives you a visual sense of what's happening there and it gives you different cues for you to really see what's going on. and. I'm a visual person, so it definitely helps. So this me. point goes to the movie. The sixth and final category is the didactic or educational qualities of the adaptation. So with this we're talking about the ability of the book or the movie to teach you something, to make you think about something in a different way and start asking questions for yourself. With this I'm going to give the point to the book. It does a much better job of touching on things that it makes you think differently about. There's a sense in the book of home that sort of develops throughout the entire novel and there's also a sense of honor versus power and it's explicitly stated the differences between them. There's also an ability of the book to end with an ambiguous ending. It means that you have to create some kind of ending for yourself. So there you have it. Four points to the book and two and a half to the movie. Both are really great adaptations and they're both really great in their own right, but you have to sort of view them separately in order to conceptualize them. Highly, highly recommend the book by Lewis Lowry. And thank you guys for watching. If you're new, hello! Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you're new, and look forward to Ree's video on Monday. Thanks guys! And I'll see you soon!